So, good evening everyone. We are uh, Sergio, Sasha and Gerta, and we will be presenting our project um, Sustainable Deep Fashion this evening. Over the past decades, um, fast fashion has really overtaken the fashion industry. Fast fashion is basically the speedy production of cheaply made clothing, uh, which still comes at a cost. First of all, the fast fashion industry accounts for about 10% of human carbon emissions. The fast fashion industry also consumes, uh, is, is the second largest consumer of water worldwide and accounts for about 20% of uh, industrial water pollution. And the working conditions are also in general very uh, bad because all the labor gets outsourced to developing countries. To this end, a circular fashion economy would be um, a much better approach. In a circular economy, every piece of clothing gets uh, recycled, repaired, redesigned, rented or resold. And the reselling part is what our project will focus on, so um, namely the second-hand market. Um, buying second-hand not only saves money, it only saves a lot of resources and in the end would potentially save the world. <laughs> so uh, there is still a problem, there is still a but. The second-hand markets at the moment, uh, you can filter on a certain category, for example, um, t-shirts that you want to look at, but you would have to scroll a lot before you can find the t-shirt that you really like. So the mission of this project would be to help users find clothing in their own style from a sustainable source. So um, the user would in the end be able to define their own style in an application by providing a picture of a piece of clothing that they like and the app would return a piece of uh, like similar pieces of clothing uh, to the user. Let's just dive straight into the application uh, prototype solution that we have uh, currently running to show what we envision. So Sasha will help me out for the moment. He will click on the photo icon that we have and input an image from which we would like to find similar items. From the moment the app has done its computations, we can see uh, the top 10 in second-hand alternatives that uh, are available on the second-hand market. Uh, these are only available on the second-hand market at the moment. And uh, let's go into the concept of uh, what has just happened, actually. So a user defines, uh, uh, inputs a picture into the application, either from his phone or from a desktop. This picture is fed into a model that we uh, designed and we'll uh, get further into in the, in the rest of the presentation. And the representation that gets out of this model is compared to a database of all the pictures that are um, available in the second-hand market at the moment. From all of these um, comparisons, the 10 most similar items get returned to the application which provides us with a happy user in the end. The main challenges that we will now talk about, like how did we get to uh, this application in the end, will first of all be image similarity. Um, how do we go about finding similar images uh, to compare them in all round layout, uh, like color and how the a uh, piece of clothing is um, framed in a picture. Next, we need to match styles. So, for example, if you would have a t-shirt, um, first of all, a picture of a t-shirt, and after that, a, uh, um, a zoomed-in picture of the patterns that are in the t-shirt, how would we be able to match those to each other? And after that, we will also talk about the data that we used, like how do you go about 
finding good data and how do you go about finding better data if the data that you find at first didn't work that well. First, we will go into image similarity. So to find similar images, we first have to find a way of representing these images um, in a way that we are able to compare them with each other. This is done by expressing the images of the fashion items as a collection of numbers. This collection of numbers, uh, from this collection of numbers, we are able to compute uh, some kind of dis distance between the different representations. And this way we are able to um, see if the images are more similar or uh, if they are really not similar at all. The first, now, now that we know uh, what representations are, the first model that we trained to find image similarity is a variational authoring program. This is an unsupervised way of learning of uh, those representations, which means that we don't have to label the images, which makes it somewhat easier in the end. So how does a variational autoencoder encoder work? At first, the picture gets fed into the model. Uh, it will go through a, a neural network encoder that um, computes the representation that we just talked about. And after that, the representation will be fed into a decoder that is a neural network that is uh, symmetric to the encoder. The whole network will be trained to find um, um, a picture that looks uh, as similar as possible to the, in the image that was used as an input. And from the representations that we get in the middle, we are able to compute distances and see if one, images, one image is similar to the other or uh, if it's not similar at all. The problem with the variational autoencoder that image, is that image similarity does not necessarily mean that we have matching items. So if we look at these three pictures, the middle one is the one we will compare. So the middle one and the top one look quite similar um, in layout at, the, at first glance, but they actually have another pattern. So a variational autoencoder would um, define these images as the same because the overall layout is the same, the colors are the same. Um, but this is not what we want in the end because the lower image is actually a zoomed in picture of the same pattern as we see in the middle picture. So this is what we would like to match in the end. To combat this problem, we define another model, and this is what Sasha will now talk about. Yeah. Thanks, Drew. Um, yeah, I will talk about the second big challenge that we uh, face, which is how do we teach a model to understand matching styles? So um, the answer is somewhat easy and at the same time quite intricate. So what we need to do is we introduce a triplet loss. The triplet loss is a loss function that we try to optimize, which contains essentially three parts. It's uh, first the distance uh, from a reference picture to the right answer, and uh, as a second term, the difference between the reference picture and the wrong answer, as well as a fixed constant margin, the alpha in, uh, in the formula, that we use to define how much learning should be possible. But let's just visualize it to understand it a little bit better. So if you just visualize the distances here, you see that the before training, um, on the state that we ended with with the variation auto encoder, the model may think that uh, the two right pictures are the more similar ones because they have similar layout. But we want to teach it um, by minimizing this loss function to shift the reference picture over to the left side to get it closer to the matching item. Now, this changes the setup. Fundamentally, because we are now not talking about an unsupervised learning experience, but about a supervised learning experience. So we need to provide the labels. We need to teach um, the, the computer that two images uh, are exactly the same item, even though they look very different. Now, um, how does this help? How, how does the quality of our representation increases due to uh, this improvement? 
And this is one of the sub-challenges that we face is it's really hard to tell. Like one thing that you could do in principle, you can just look at the representations themselves. So what you just saw is a learning of the variation autoencoder and all the colors represent different items where it's each point is just one image uh, um, uh, connected to this item. And you may see that he tries to separate them in space and try to build different blobs of colors uh, to distinguish the items, but it's not performing particularly well. Whereas the triplet model by training really tries hard to push them out and uh, try to separate them, usually it does a much better job. But at the same time, this is not sufficient to really understand performance in the end. So what we have to do is we have to think about a nice metric that we can measure that gives us a single number, uh, numerical value to judge if our model was performing better or worse. And the solution we came up with is top K accuracy. So essentially, how often does our model return the right item um, inside the predictions? So let's say we have this image as a reference picture, we query it, and we check it against a database containing lots of different images. We can then run the model, we get the representations, and we compute the distances. We sort them from the closest item to the farthest. And then the top K accuracy asks, uh, once we know the labels, let's say we want to know the top one accuracy, is the right image in the first picture? No, it's not. So top one accuracy would not be uh, fulfilled. It would get essentially minus points. But see, if we do top five accuracy, suddenly the right image is in there, and we nicely uh, have a nice prediction here. And this is precisely the measure that we will focus on. Um, doing so, uh, it it's motivates us to make a very specific split for our data. So this graph that you're seeing right here on the, on the um, x-axis uh, shows the number of images that we have for a certain item, whereas the y-axis or the length of the bar just indicates how many items we have in total. And as you can see, uh, or just, just infer, is that we have a lot of items with lots uh, with little amount of pictures uh, and compared to less if we want to have more pictures. And what we decided is uh, the very left-hand bar that we call it red, we take this for testing. This bar contains only two pictures per item. So if we take this for testing and we split it in a validation test set, and we take one item out and carry it against all others, there's exactly one right answer, which gives us the accuracy that we search for. Doing so, quite nicely gives us nice results, so we tested on various different models, but we're just uh, uh, showcasing you the top performance, and uh, overall the best performing model was a uh, model trained on encrypted loss with a custom architecture. So custom architecture in our case is a convolutional neural network with five layers, followed by three dense layers, which already outperforms um, a pre-trained model, uh, where we choose the mobile net version 2, which is pre-trained on image net, and struggled a lot harder to distinguish these uh, fashion items. It uh, performed not much better than the variation of encoder, as we can establish now by our accuracy uh, uh, measure. But the point that I really want to stress here is um, the main performance gain that we got was not fiddling around with the architectures, was not, not necessarily fiddling around with the hyperparameters, as oftentimes it was all about the data. Without the good data, our predictions would be pretty bad. So this is now one of the most important points that uh, Sergio will not talk about. What was our uh, journey to get the data that we operate on? Well, um, as Sasha said, uh, the model performance is, is proportional to the quality of data. And to have a good quality, of data, we work hard and have our hands dirty. Well, uh, in our journey to our search for uh, good data, we uh, started with uh, three sources of data. First, we started with this session two data set uh, that is uh, readily available and updated. Then we built our own data set with the help from friends and family. And then we went for web scrapping to increase our uh, data set. And, not fully satisfied, we did some data augmentation to increase our data set. And our end results are a sum of 
all of these data sets together. And now I will talk about uh, each one separately. <coughs> First, the data set uh, from this session two uh, is made from the Asian uh, market and contains a pair of um, customer and shop images and uh, from the, the commercial picture and picture from the user and have uh, different items, different styles and colors. And uh, an interesting thing here is that uh, we have several pictures uh, from it items. And this is the differential from the lead session to that set. Then uh, our own data set, <coughs> we could uh, add high diversity of angle zoom and all this lighting to our uh, pictures, but the growing of the data set was very slow. And at this point, we thank our friends and family to help us with uh, making this data set. Then we went to Scrap and Vinted, and that is a um, lot of different amount of items, as you can see in the, the bars below. Uh, but each item has a few images, not, uh, it's not like the uh, Deep Fashion 2. And uh, there are some problems with this uh, scrap data set that, uh, as you can see in this picture, uh, it's a picture from the tag of a, a cloak. So we have to clean this data set. And to speed up the clean process, we created our app, uh, we can see here, uh, working. And we are able to remove different items, duplicated items, the pictures from tags, and any ambiguity uh, that we could observe in the data set. And then we have uh, some promising, promising results with the top 10 uh, uh, of 56%. Uh, and when we did uh, data augmentation, we applied uh, random rotation and uh, random zoom, and we have an increase of 2%. Uh, in our model performance, and as we, uh, you already seen this before with Sasha, uh, our final top 10 performance in accuracy is uh, 58%. Then I will come back to Sasha. Thank you. Okay, so the next part is really exciting. So for now, we just presented you, okay, you fit an image, you get an image back. But the nice part about these representations that we generated is they are much more general. And um, they have actually, in reality, nice properties to the extent that if you just feed uh, an image from, from, let's say, some t-shirt, uh, we can modify these representations. Right now, you probably see the app, and this blue thing on the right indicates uh, the embedding. It's more of an abstract way, but you will see a change when you move the sliders. The first slider here is from uh, is like a reduction to the principal components, and just the very first axis that explains the most variance in our data uh, that we're predicting. If GERD would put it to the right, then we generally get more darker results, whereas if we go to the left, then usually we get more brighter results. And obviously you can tune it to be in the middle. So if you're not satisfied with the predictions that you get, you can modify them. And we could even identify directions in our uh, data set, like adding stripes. There's a new direction where stripes appear, so if GERD just pumps up the stripe slider, we will suddenly see much more stripes. And again, if we do it more subtly, we should get something in between taking that our data set contains these kind of images. We can maybe go one further to introduce floral patterns uh, just for fun, but uh, uh, I guess you get the point, and uh, please rejoice. You can try yourself in a moment. Um, now, for the last point, um, this, this app does also operate nicely or reasonably if you feed completely different items. Like who says that you put an image of a cloth here? Like let's just put a smiley in there and see what you get. And you probably see it's kind of reasonable. Obviously you get only, only uh, uh, sleeves back, top sleeves back because that's the only thing that is in the database. But the predictions are usually quite reasonable. With that I would like to come to our conclusion. And um, as I said, please try this app for yourself. You can find it on a sustainable 
minus Leadfashion minus dash dot Heroku app dot com. Much thanks for Heroku to host this app uh, for free. If you have any feedback, you find some nice predictions, you had a good laugh, please send us the results on LinkedIn. We are interested to hear about it. We have also lots of ideas how to improve. Um, we want to add more diversity, maybe not only predict on, on shirts, but also pants, shoes, and more. We could add more power to the model. We could go for a generative diverse on your network to get even better matching. We could go for more data or live data, in fact, by actually returning uh, vintage data that is currently online or server, which is a Zalando secondhand uh, uh, store that just opened recently. And finally, maybe make the optionals, uh, the styles optional, so maybe you're more interested in colors than uh, in the prints, so we could add a slider for you to control this behavior. Finally, thank you all for listening. Um, we lo use lots of nice packages to get their regard, and I think the very last credit that we need to give uh, in a uh, like, very uh, honest way is to Google Cloud and AWS, who provided us with free credit of about one thousand dollars which we totally burnt on all GPUs to train our models. So thanks for the free money and uh, thank you for listening.